Okay, folks, sorry about the wait, but we're gonna get this match underway. This is another very exciting one. Obviously, this is a quarter quarterfinals match. So both players, very, very competitive. So looking at those PBs, uh, we have TNT with a 1044 and Silver Star with a 1041. Uh, Silver with, I think, still a top four time. I know that, um, I think it's three people have sub 1041. This, or no, four. Okay, so that'll be top five. Well, both getting started off in YI2 here. Nothing too much to say, hopefully. As always, I'm going to be very interested to see what sort of strats they're, they're using in this race. I knew that Silverstar had said earlier that he was tempted to go for some uh, RTA strats, so we'll, we'll just see. That's certainly an option if he needs to. Okay, both getting box jump, that's always a good sign. Okay, both finishing up with a 259, very nice. Uh, pretty much everything that we'd expect from these two. Yeah, Ben on commentary as- Oh, Mike, if you if you want to join me, please feel free. I, it, we were just struggling so much with um, a bunch of different things that I didn't even have time to message you. So feel free if you want to, if not, no worries. Although it would be appreciated. Okay, I'm really sorry. I was looking away, so I'm just gonna see on the restream. Nope, we didn't get any shell jumps. I'm assuming that at least one of them attempted it. Um, I don't know why I looked at the restream, because they both got 277s going through that pipe. Yep. <laughs> no worries, Mike. In a sense, I have the, the Smoke Alarm Lou battery as my co-commentator. Okay, uh, 280 for Silver Star uh, from Room 1. I just ended up being a bit slower than ideal. Oh, nice Fire Flower grab from Silver Star there, that's, that's pretty cool. And both with uh, good Iggy kills. Okay, both are looking pretty strong at the moment. Again, as we'd expect, both performing very well in World 1. But it's World 2 where it starts to get spicy, starts to get interesting. First off with light speed. It's hard for me to tell at this moment. Yeah, I was thinking that TNT probably got fast fly earlier than Silver Star. Oh, and, and Silver Star really uh, with pretty bad flight speed. That's unfortunate with a 360. TNT with a 61. Sort of a bit slow on that key grab. But DS1 is always where it's very interesting as well. 
Oh, and we're seeing that uh, trademark of Silver Stars passing up in Dry Room altogether. Honestly, it's not a bad percentage play. Uh, a lot of people will probably look down on this decision, but um, it's interesting nonetheless. Mmm, interesting. Very, very interesting indeed. I think they pretty much broke even. Now, the in-game timers are going to be deceiving. That's interesting. Obviously, Silver Star is one of the best players, and making the decision to pass up in Dry Room may be surprising to a lot of people. But Dry Room done optimally is... It's only marginally faster, it's so marginal just um, how much faster it is. So TNT struggled a bit at the end of Ghost House, losing a bit of time. I think this is still pretty much tied though. TNT maybe just over half a second ahead. These zips, as often, are going to be very, very important in deciding uh, a lead here. Damn, and it's such a big ask for both players to get good zips, but it seems that this time Silver Star will be coming out on top. Very nice for Silver Star. A bit unfortunate for TNT. Just having a bit of trouble at the end of Star World 2. Uh, this could pretty much make it even again. Well, not exactly even. Let's see. Um, 30 Star World 3 compared to. Nah, he's gonna need. Uh, he's gonna need a bit of help from Silver Star. Hopefully. Or, sorry, hoping that he's uh, gonna make a mistake. Look at how close this is. Look at how close this is. And it's pretty much what we'd come to expect from two racers of this caliber. Okay, both with nice room twos. And uh, both, will all, both will also be going for uh, room five with that far far. Hopefully not, Aaron. Hopefully not. Though, if, uh, if Silver Star performs well in this Bowser fight, doesn't make any mistakes, gets a good cape kill, we definitely will not be needing a retime. Silver Star has quite a nice advantage going into this. <laughs> well, Truman and Volpe, that's a bigger ask, honestly. non-community regulated match. Damn though, I really wanted to see that Truman Volpe match. The winner of me and Steven play the winner of that. Beep. I've been trying to mute my mic whenever it goes off, but sometimes I'm not quick enough. Beep. 
both have had very nice Bowser fights so far. No complaints. Another variation in what Silver Star does compared to a lot of other people goes for the capeless version of Falskid. Interesting. Silver Star getting a slow hit on that fourth through. TNT with a fast hit. Ooh, this is actually gotten quite close again. I mean, it's not like super duper close, but it's, it's close enough. I know I just contradicted myself there, but um, Silver is only one hit away from securing a victory. Yeah, very, very nice. Uh, I feel comfortable calling that one for Silver Star. Uh, looks like a difference of about four seconds race time. So very well done to Silver Star. Getting a 10.47 in a race, which is very nice. So again, very well done to both runners. Both played incredibly well, but obviously whenever it's a short category like this, one or two seconds is just gonna... Wait, really, Aaron? I mean, sorry. I mean, is that official, Aaron? I didn't mean to sound surprised. I'm not surprised, but... Official? Dude. Dude. Well, big congrats to Treatment on a 2-0 victory. Doesn't get much more convincing than that. Damn, that's interesting. Just gonna say, if you're drinking lemons, you've got lemonade. Wow, Aaron, that's very impressive. Very well done to Treeman. 10.51 and 10... Whoa, at 10.59 in his first race? What happened? Like, he... Bowser must have went wrong or something. Because he was on decent pace. Assuming these are chronological. Well... It saddens me to say that that will be Bulby's last match in this tournament. Ah, I was really hoping to get an opportunity to race against him, but you know what? Racing against Truman, hopefully, if I win, would be a pleasure as well. But you know, I've got to get past Stan first. Yeah, and I imagine if he got that last hit, Oh, I mean, I suppose you're talking just about the last hit. Yeah, yeah, probably. The Ben Stan race of the century. I agree. Uh, we were going to schedule it for today, but... Um, well, a combination of me getting up late and then Steven feeling pretty sick. I think that's going to get pushed back to, like, Tuesday. Okay, we're going to be right back. We're going to set up for race two.
Alrighty, welcome back everybody to race two of this best of three match, and it's also a quarters final match. Uh, that's between uh, Silver Star and TNT. Best of luck to both racers as always. So last time we got to see some pretty interesting plays from Silverstar. Silverstar just straight up passed, uh, passed up in Dry Room, which, you know, you just don't see that from a lot of people, but um, Silverstar has pretty good reasoning for that. So that was definitely interesting to see. So, as expected, both are looking pretty good in YI3. And both getting 259s, very nice. Okay, last time shell jumps didn't go as planned. Let's see if we get them this time. That's if they go for them. We'll see you. Both spin jumped on the shells, passing up on them. Fair enough. Totally makes sense. Um, I thought they possibly attempted them earlier, but I'm possibly getting mixed up. Yeah, YI3, it's sort of the gateway to the rest of the game, at least in terms of speedrunning. Uh, you've got to learn all of that platforming, and then you've got a bunch of easier levels afterwards. But once you get it done, it's totally easy. It really is. Both approaching room one of Iggy's pretty much identically. Uh, Silver Star was a bit slower on that last fence, but wow, that was so synced. Silver Star with a slightly swaggier fire grab. Yeah, and it was pretty nice. So TNT will be in the lead here. Only by a little bit. Still nice. Very nice, uh, Iggy. Okay, so last time both getting under 362, uh, they're both going to be hoping it goes slightly better this time. But up to your point, you can only do as much as the game actually gives you. Not only are these flight speeds hard to judge, but they're pretty damn random. Pretty much a mirror image of what we saw last time. 362 from TNT. Oh, sorry, no, it was 361, 360. Never mind. Uh, TNT. Nice DP1. Silver Star just slightly slower than what would be wanted. Again, like last time, Silver Star just passing up on Dry Room. That was a very, very nice uh, DS one from TNT. 
Uh, Silver Star, based on the strats that he used, that was pretty good as well. So in our last race, um, Silver Star versus Lou, Silver Star pulled off, or not Silver Star, Seathorn versus Lou. Seathorn pulled off some amazing strats in this ghost house. A 71 door it was so nice, so good. Yeah, both of these guys are absolutely incredible. Um, Silver Star skips dry room because it really doesn't save that much time, and it's a percentage play. So, it avoids you getting hit, you know, and losing cape in a race scenario. And plus, if you lose your shell early on, you're going to lose a lot of time, compared to not doing dry room. So there are a couple of reasons. Yeah, as Louis says. Interesting zips. Silver Star getting a 290, even though having to do a backup. That was a really, really good recovery. TNT not faring, not faring too well again. I mean, it was pretty okay, like on average, I guess. But going up against Silver Star is going to be a big loss. Yeah, Louis, it feels like that. Like, <laughs> the rainbow block feels just indestructible. Well, TNT had a slightly better Star World 2, making this even closer. I think it's like 0.3 or 0.4. Like, I think someone said 0.3. I was surprised just how small a time save it is. Uh, no, Fico. Unfortunately not. We might have a date for the winner's finals kind of soon, but not the grand finals. Although if you look at the bracket, uh, the grand finals will fall within the, within the deadline. Okay, so going into Bowser, Silver Star has a marginal lead again. It's even closer than last time, like far closer. Well, unfortunately, TNT getting slow fly in room two. Ooh, also missing the door. So we're pretty much looking at a mirror we saw last time. Oh, oh well, that's unfortunate for TNT losing Peace Speed and Dark Room. I mean, it doesn't even really change things too much. Like, he was still probably relying on Silver Star making a mistake of some kind, but it needs to be a bigger mistake now. Very good phase one from Silver Star. Also good phase one from TNT. Yeah, it's just insane how competitive this is at this point. Okay. Similar to last time, we're seeing the capeless version of Ball Skip from Silver Star. 
I mean, if done optimally, it doesn't waste any time. But it's still always an interesting sort of difference from what other runners tend to do. So we're two hits away from knowing the result of this match. Can Silver Star hold on? Those were two insanely good runs. Very well done to Silver Star. Um, I mean, 2 0 against someone like TNT is a very, very convincing win. Um, like TNT, TNT played very well throughout, um, just have small, a couple of small minor mistakes. Um, but yeah, those runs speak for themselves. Uh, very much the reason why both these guys deserve to be in the quarterfinals. So I hope you all enjoyed that. Though I'm gonna ask if either of them wanna join me for a quick chat here in live. Get to hear their thoughts firsthand. Okay, and it looks like we're going to have both of them joining us. And don't go away, folks, because we have another race coming up in 10 minutes. And boy, oh boy, if you thought this one was going to be close, well, this next one probably will be just as close. Um, pretty much both the next runners are within the same margins as these guys. You guys, that was very entertaining. Thank you so much both for the races. I'm sure you have a lot to say about that. Uh, both of you. Oh, I need to turn them. On. One second. Sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. Oh yeah, you've got stuff to rant about. Uh, mine. Uh, it was okay. Like both races were okay, pretty much the whole time. Yeah, they, they like, both look. Pretty good to me, especially that second one. Yeah, I had quite a bit of slop in the first one, but the second one was pretty good, pretty solid. Um, I agree. Uh, I mean, both you guys played really well. Uh, your DS1 uh, was nice as well. Also, it was nice to see the difference. Um, I mean, I expected you to do that, but it was nice to see uh, no dry room. I think... Um comparatively to like how much I've gotten a lot better of the tournaments so comparing to my last runs and like to my own skill level those are probably the two worst runs I've put up in the tournament so I'm a little bit salty about that. Oof. It was just like both times I was making mistakes in the same places. Uh, my Bowser's were really sloppy which, like, after the fact, it looks bad, but, like, while I was in, I was just kind of pissed off because I knew it was, like, an hell at that point. But just Star World 1 both times has really got me. Yeah, Star World 1 is just incredibly frustrating, and I have found if you mess up Star World 1 in your first race, you're going to do exactly the same thing in your next one. Uh, the muscle memory is just, like, random, almost. It just sticks with you. It's horrible. I'm usually fine with it too, but like when I'm in, when I'm on a really good run, it always gets me. Like if I'm on decent pace or if I'm just doing like chill and reset attempts, it's not that bad. But like times like these, it just gets me. Yeah, I suppose I had the advantage <laughs> for that in that case because I, I know every single run is not going to be my PV. Yeah. My strats, I. The best I can get is 10.43, since I'm going for safe stuff. Yeah, yeah it, it's very interesting to see how you very uh, specifically um, readied yourself for that, uh, which I think makes you a pretty scary race opponent. Sorry, TNT, I cut you off there. Oh, no, it's fine. Um, good luck, though. You're facing up against the beauty. 
yeah, yeah. Louis. <laughs> Yeah. I'm not expecting to win that one, but it'll be a pleasant surprise if I do. Yeah. Well, if Louis has runs like he did in my race versus him, you definitely can. Uh, but what we saw earlier against Seathorn is just the typical uh, no forgiveness uh, from Louis. But, you know, you could still beat him. So I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. I want to see you go all out. Let's see. Let's go all right. <laughs> Um, I think I think you guys have different strengths in different places, and I'm looking forward to see, seeing what that produces. TNT, have you had a look at the bracket? Do you know what sort of pool of people you're likely to face? Yeah, I think it's, um, let me check. We are matched by 49. So that puts me up against, uh, most likely whoever wins Uma versus Dacto. So, that's a bit scary. Me and Umar have the similar PPs. I mean, anything at this point in the tournament is going to be top rates, so... And after you win that one, it's probably going to be C. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Either of those would be really good races, though, so... Honestly, I'd call it a toss, but... Yeah, Umar has been very intimidating in this tournament. Um, I think um, he's done really, really well. Um... But I think you're probably a favorite against any of those guys. Not not to say, you know, anything about their ability, but I mean, you're one of the best SMW players, so... Oh, I just look back to the results. It's made me sad. I've only put up one 10 5x, and that was in round two. So, yeah, that, was, that 1052 is not a good run. Well, yeah, it, it is unfortunate, but now I suppose you'll have an opportunity to hold your ground in the second chance bracket. Um, you can't be too far away from money matches either, I think. I'm one match away. Yeah. Because everyone's best of five. Oh, wow, I can't wait. Um, but yeah, as I mentioned earlier, we have Yoshi versus Dabs coming up. That's going to be insanely close. I have no idea what to think about that. Both, I mean, Yoshi got really close to knocking out Aaron. Or, well, I wouldn't say knocking out Aaron. Well, I mean, it's the same thing. Um, like, both of those guys were getting, like, sub, or, like, mid-1040s. So I'm looking forward to that. And then Idobs has, like, a low 1040 PB as well. The nice thing about uh, the money matches is that me losing here helps me on my brackets. It's my predictions in second place right now. I had me losing to you, so I no. threw it for that free forty-one dollars. So yeah, possibly. Uh, my prediction is more what I wanted to happen, so my bracket is dead uh, because everybody who should win has won, uh, pretty much, um, except for Stephen. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, that was the pretty much, I guess. <laughs> you had me losing in round four. I'm so offended. <laughs> I'm trying to think. Who did I have? Oh wait, no, I had me versus Volpe for this, which was just never gonna happen. Oh, yeah. and, um, you had you... Jackson going to the finals against Dots. Jackson beat up so <laughs> oh, oh, yes. Oh wait, really? I had Jackson in the final as well? Yeah. Oh wait, were you talking about my mine? Oh yeah, I was thinking about your oh, prediction. Yeah. Oh, fair enough. Yeah, I had him getting to the semi-finals and beating me because, I don't know, why not? <laughs> um, but yeah, guys, thank you so much. We're going to get set up for the next one. Um, and yeah, good races. All right. All right. Thanks for commentating. Yeah, no you. worries. Take care.